Welcome to the new episode of r slash ask reddit. What did you think was normal about your body until someone said it was anything but normal. Waking up really sore. Turns out I had nocturnal epilepsy. Whoa. I've never heard of this. Till. Okay so I'm new to having seizures. Started December of last year. Mine are focal and most happen while I'm asleep. After the most recent seizure I was referred to a new neurologist. By the time I was able to get an appointment, it had been a little while since I'd had a seizure. It was the longest break I'd had so far. My partner and I said we were happy about that, and the neurologist asked if it was possible that I had some during the night that didn't wake me up. I had no idea that could even happen, because mine have always been strong enough to wake not just me, but also my partner. This comment is going to make me look up nocturnal epilepsy now. I still feel like I have so much to learn about this disorder. Yup, I always wondered why I woke up with sore legs or feeling like I just did a workout. Also waking up with the entire right side of my body feeling numb and tingly. Years of unchecked epilepsy with what was damn near nightly seizures. Ganglion cysts. I've had them as long as I can remember. They're smaller so it wasn't enough to really look like what I imagined a cyst to be, just thought it was a type of bone in my hand. At 23 my girlfriend told me to stay where I was, while she grabbed a book and thumped the ever living hell out of my hand and it just disappeared. The shock in my face was probably imaginable as I thought this woman just deleted one of my bones. I get them on the top of my foot. Years and years they bothered me on and off. Finally in my early 30s, I made an appointment to see a podiatrist having no idea what it was when it had once again flared up. Night before my appointment I decided to soak my feet in the foot spa, so that I wouldn't have like embarrassing gross dry skin or anything for this foot doctor. Next day, I'm headed into my appointment thinking, huh, it feels way better. Doctor explained to me the hot water made the cyst burst. I guess now at least I know how to make them go away, without smashing them, which he also joked about. I thought everyone could hear their heartbeat in their ear, pulsatile tinnitus, until I asked someone at school when I was about 7, and they had no clue what I was on about. Still 18 years later I can't imagine hearing complete silence. This happens to me occasionally when laying down to sleep, and my ear is pressed against the pillow. Yes. As I kid I always thought it sounded like a really small person marching through crunchy snow. Sometimes I will get an itch, and I can't tell where it is. I know that sounds crazy, but it's like the sensation runs along a nerve. I'll kind of feel it maybe in my leg, but then when I go to scratch it, it doesn't work, because the itch isn't actually located there. Like I'll have to go and find a spot maybe on my lower back that is actually the source of the itch. I call it referred itch, but I have never talked to anybody who's ever heard of it. Finally someone knows what DF I'm talking about. It's like it moves. I don't get brain freeze, I get back freeze. If I eat something cold too quickly I get a really bad pain to the right of my spine at the middle of my back, like cramp. Mine is in my chest between my ribs. I assumed brain freeze just meant your brain freezing your chest. Didn't figure out I was different till about 22. Wait, does people's brain actually freeze? My chest just get really cold. I thought strawberries were spicy until well into adulthood. Can vividly remember the look my parents gave me as a kid when I said, I like how spicy ketchup is, it makes my tongue tingle. I said the same thing about walnuts. My mom told me they were very acidic, and not to eat more than 3 at a time. Turns out she's dumb, and we are both allergic to walnuts. Astigmatism, I had real trouble believing, that some people don't see streaks when looking at street lights etc. I got laser eyes correction, and it fixed my astigmatisms and now all my halos are round instead of stretched. I inquired about laser correction, and they pretty much told me that my eyesight was so bad that they'd have removed so much material that my eyes wouldn't be able to hold the internal pressure and could just explode. So that's fun. How much and how long I bleed for? I suffered for over a decade from heavy painful periods. It took a co-worker commenting on how it was concerning. I was still bleeding from a small cut 45 minutes later for me to give it any thought. Turns out I have a bleeding disorder. What type of bleeding disorder did they distances you with? Were you also always tired all the time and cold? Your symptoms match mine to a T. Fainting when laughing too hard. Laughter induced syncope. My brothers thought I was making it up. 
until they told me a joke while I was driving. Not a funny experience at all. Do you have any daytime sleepiness? Narcolepsy is triggered by emotions, and I've watched a documentary where a guy instantly fell asleep when he laughed watching a comedy show. I'm not sleepy through daytime. When I laugh too hard, while seated I start feeling like I'm melting into the chair, my muscles begin to relax and numb away, my arms get extended, and my legs too. I lose control of my body, sometimes I even slide off the chair onto the floor. My facial expressions get freeze then slowly relax like I'm sleeping, but my eyes are wide open. All of this happen in a span of 5 to 10 seconds. Then I snap back. Feeling altingly. In my head apparently all happens much faster. Laugh or melt, or fraction of a second blackout or snap back. In my head it feels like 3 seconds, and sometimes I still hear my thoughts, only that they don't make any sense. Look up cataplexy. It's associated with narcolepsy and sounds like what you are experiencing. I thought everyone had hips that try to pull out of socket. I also have bendy syndrome. I've never heard that before, but I'll reference my hypermobility like this from now on. I love it. My uvula is forked. Found out later in life it's called a bifid uvula, and is one of the mildest forms of cleft palate. My son has it too. Doctor tell there's no problem or consequence whatsoever. Just an interesting fact about you. In my country theirs is a belief that this means you will have a great voice to sing, which is just that, a belief. Savage burn to your son mayo. I'm 40 and thought only being able to breathe out one nostril was normal until I went on a road trip with a friend who pointed out I snore and have a deviated septum and need to get it fixed. Surgery has been scheduled. Just got it septoplasty and turbinate reduction 1.5 months ago, and it's literally life changing. My nose is too. I can get air through both. However, if my mouth was taped I'd suffocate. Thought it was normal, until my wife asked why I breathe out of my mouth. I'm like, to live? She didn't believe me. We taped my mouth closed, and I passed out after a few minutes. I guess it's just restricted somehow but never thought it was abnormal. My GF pointed out that a couple of what I thought were just moles or something were a couple of tiny extra nipples under my proper right nipple. What are the qualifications for moles on the chest to be considered nipples? I believe they need to be along the milk line on your body. Think like how a dog's nipples are spaced along their belly. There are tori tori on the roof of my mouth and under my tongue. Specifically taurus palatinus and mandibulatory. I thought everyone's palate had a lump in the middle. Come to find out most people have a smooth palate, and that I actually have a benign bony tumor there. I just had to look this up. Holy carp it makes sense now, why my mouth has lumps. Mine are small, but it bothers my tongue at times. I have those too. They really and are painful when the dentist is taking x-rays, since the little x-ray device sits right on the tori and hurt. I have a fairly deep divot above my butt. Apparently other people don't have that. Sacral divot. I bet you were checked for spina bifida as a newborn. No idea. It was the 70s. So maybe not? I apparently had clicking hips as a baby and had to wear a nappy with lots of padding in between the legs. Old style cloth nappies. Hips have never been quite right. I have a massive head and neck for my height and body type. I got called out on it in high school when I lost a bunch of weight after a growth spurt. I'm now 5 feet 10 ish 175 pounds and in decent shape. My neck was 17.5 inches before I lost weight now it's around 17. I can't buy a dress shirt off the shelf if I need to wear a tie and I had to special order a helmet when I got a motorcycle. I started going to the gym originally, so I could attempt to make my body and head match. As a side note sorry mom. Like a bowling ball through a garden hose. We have the same size neck, except I'm 6 feet 4 inches and weight 255 pounds. You must be a beast on the wrestling mat. I can create a low rumbling sound in my head, by tensing a muscle within the ear. Tense a timepony. It's apparently rare for people, to be able to control that muscle at will. Yes thank you. I've done this my whole life, but when trying to explain it to people I could never pinpoint exactly what muscle I'm controlling, I just knew I was tensing something in my head. Also, someone please tell me I'm not alone in doing this to the sound of the 20th century fox intro, because the sound is likened to a drum roll? Lol absolutely, are you me? 
I've never been more certain we are talking about the same thing than I'm after reading your description. R slash year rumblers assemble. I've never done gymnastics, I barely stretch and I'm 29, but I can put my feet behind my head and lay my thumbs down on my wrists. Ellers Danlos syndrome? Or much more likely, hypermobility spectrum disorder. EDS is like an extreme version of HSD. HSD can also be misdiagnosed EDS. Happened to me. If I eat too quickly, or don't chew my food well enough, my chest or esophagus will hurt, and I have to wait before eating again. I just have to get out little burps, or wait until it passes. Always thought this was normal until someone told me it sounds like a hiatal hernia. It's when your stomach moves up your esophagus or chest, and is apparently common with people over 50 or overweight, of which I'm neither. Yeah it's a hernia, and it's annoying. Edit, a lot of comments have suggested this could also be eosinophilic esophagitis, and upon reading more, this could very well be what I'm dealing with, and not a hernia. For me there are similar symptoms, but eosinophilic esophagitis seems to match more. Water doesn't help it feel better, in fact usually makes it worse, my body usually starts drooling, if it's a bad episode, and I'll end up having to regurgitate food, until I feel relief. I had hiatal hernia surgery and it still happens unfortunately. It's especially bad with bread heavy meals, like a sub sandwich. Restless legs, I developed it as a child and thought everyone experienced leg cramps, when they fall asleep until a doctor told me otherwise at 24. Thanks for all of the advice, turns out I actually have a condition called dysautonomia, I don't have anemia. Restless legs differs from cramps, because moving your legs makes the pain stop. If you stop moving the pain comes back and vice versa. The only way to keep the pain away is to keep moving. I fall asleep rubbing my legs together like a cricket. Being a syndrome a collection of symptoms, RLS can have many causes. My husband has this and tried everything. Magnesium helped some. Have you found anything? The fact that my thoughts have thoughts behind them at a lower volume. Also what does the voice in my head sound like? I can hear it, but I cannot figure out what the hell sound it makes. I was, 8, a few days prior mum, and I were discussing a study on free will. As the article states, it was found to be faulty, but that doesn't mean it's completely wrong. I was sitting on the toilet in silence, and every thought I had seemed to be preempted by the same thought, just much quieter. A little wave, then a big wave. If I'm doing a complex task that requires lots of thinking there may even be three waves. It kind of makes sense. Or thought has to start somewhere. It all depends on how many neurons activate before you hear it. But it does lead to the question, how long ago did that activation start? What started it? And am I in control of them? Not that it matters really, it is just an interesting thought experiment. I can send chills down my spine voluntarily on command. I assumed everyone could do it. It came up in a conversation, when I was about 30. Turns out I'm weird. Any idea what this is, or what it's called? When I lay perfectly still at night in bed, I can send tingly sensations all throughout my body, when I concentrate on laying perfectly still. Not sure what it's called. I think the theory behind it is, that some wires in the back of my head are wired differently. I thought pickles, or any super vine gar oil sour food thing, made everybody's head sweat. It wasn't until I mentioned, pickle sweats to someone, while wiping at my eyelids, that I realized it's not as common as I originally believed. Turns out I probably have something called freeze syndrome, gustatory sweating, that was likely caused by a badly infected salivary gland, that damaged the nerve. Pickle sweats is my favorite stripper. Tinnitus and phosphenes. I was born with them, but I did not find out that it was not the norm until I was in my 30s. I really think tinnitus is far more common than people on here claim it is. If TV shows can mimic the sound and experience of tinnitus and people know exactly what it is, it's not a rare thing in my opinion. I thought I was catching radio signals as a kid. I have photic sneezing. Just a fancy term that means the sun, the glare from the sun, and going from inside to outside, or sometimes bright lights make me sneeze. Thought it was normal, but it's not that common. My kids have it too which leads me to believe there are some hereditary genes turned on that make it happen. If I feel a sneeze coming on, but it won't happen, I look at a bright light and I sneeze almost immediately. Is that the same thing you think? Absolutely the same thing. 
when I was 19 I went out for some Taco Bell with a couple friends. While we were eating and talking, some ground beef made it from my mouth into my nose when I swallowed. I quickly said, ugh hold on sorry I just got some meat in my nose. Then turned away, snorted it back into my mouth, and looked up to see complete confusion from my friends. That day I learned most people don't get food in their nose once in a while when they swallow. Edit. Well I guess after several years of reddit, my top comment ever is going to be about Taco Bell up my nose. I should have known. I've come full circle from being the kid who was eating stuff for money. I knew what got the likes all along. Cleft palate of some kind. Whenever I pick my ear with a cotton, swab I need to cough. Took me until my 20s to learn from my, so that this is not a normal thing lol. It's called the Arnold's reflex and apparently only 2% of all people have it. I thought everybody had it. Wait I do this too is this not a normal thing? I thought everyone coughed when they cleaned their ears. Whenever I run for more than a minute, my throat gets stuffy and sore. I used to think that I was just a bad runner. When I was 30, I told my doctor about it. It turned out that I have asthma. Oh no. I thought this was normal too. I just did a 5k with my dog last weekend and was complaining to my cousin afterward about tasting blood. And the whole time I was doing the run, it felt like I was drowning in really thick mucus. But it always has, and I just thought that was a normal running thing. This is why I can't run. Reddit, I love you. I thought everybody had an inner monologue that was their own voice narrating everything they do and conversing with themselves until my friend told me that was not the case. Curiously enough, he has aphantasia, so it seems our experiences with our own thoughts could not be more different from each other. Are you a maladaptive daydreamer? I'm and I do that too. What's maladaptive daydreaming entail for you? I just searched it up and seems like a slightly more intense level of daydreaming compared to me. When I'm hungry and laying in bed I get something called the neck fizzles. Sounds like soda pop fizzling in my throat or neck. Doesn't go away until I eat something. I have accessory bones in my feet. Thought everyone had them. When I was little I used to shed tears when I pooped all the time. Not from pain or anything. Apparently there's some nerve endings that get crossed from the sphincter to the eye duct. I get the neck fizzles too. Only when I'm very hungry and I've called it throat hunger lol. I also feel super sh** when it happens. Maybe low blood sugar? But I don't know anyone else who has this happen. My nipples are inverted so instead of little peaks I have donuts. Puberty was eye opening. If it bothers you, and it shouldn't, nipple piercing is a way to reverse this. Had a friend I got real drunk with once, and mentioned my weirdo nips. She apparently also had inverted and tried the piercing method, but as soon as it healed, and she wanted to switch out the studs they inverted again, and no matter how much she massaged the damn things, she was unable to write them long enough to get in new studs. As much as I had doubts, I wasn't about to question her determination for success. I have a film of static over my vision constantly, and I thought that was how everybody saw, until I discovered visual snow syndrome is a thing. You're not alone. I only recently found this out as well. How's your night vision? I've always found it incredibly difficult to see at night, because of the visual static. I have this I think, I don't have a film of static, everything is made of static. I dk how to explain it well lol. My night vision is quite good, but I can't quite tell where similarly colored objects start and end. That I can smell pictures and videos, and will sometimes smell something and will say, it smells like the movie Shrek in here, real example, and people never understood me, until I spoke to someone, and they told me it's synesthesia. I will also sometimes smell names and words, it's not super strong, but it's so weird to me, and I still, don't really understand how it works. I would absolutely lose my mind if someone walked into a room and said it smells like Shrek in here. This gives a whole new meaning to it smells like in here. Apparently aren't supposed to have two holes. It's a mutation I discovered I had this year and I'm 22. Add another one and your GF can play it like a flute. A skin flautist. My deviated septum. I remember talking to a nurse during a physical, and I said something like well you know how you breathe more through one side of your nose. She said um, no, I was 34 when this conversation happened. I had surgery a few months later, and it turns out no that was not normal. 
Most of the time I only breathe through one nostril, but it switches sometimes. I always thought it was just mucus on one side of the nose that switched periodically, probably for cleaning or draining or something. Might I have that? I kind of have trouble breathing through my nose every once in a while so, if it's something that can be fixed I'd love that. I thought everyone had two toes that are just kind of connected nope, I have webbed toes. My mom has that, and so far one person in every generation has it. My cousin has it. My great uncle has it. And I don't remember who had it before him. So now we wait as the next generation is born to figure out whose kid will have it next. I have two toes slightly webbed on each foot too. Crazy deja vu. It's epilepsy lol. How crazy we talking here? Um, mine was a few times a day, and I had deja read too. The dream one. It was one of the first questions the neurologist asked me, and I said yeah of course I have deja vu all the time. Doesn't everyone? Anyway if it's happening to you a lot, and if you kinda get a queasy stomach with it, then it's not a bad idea to look into it a bit more. Originally posted comment under my husband's account so reposting, I can smell when my kids are getting sick. It's a subtle smell, but every time I notice it, they get sick just a day or so later. I talked to my husband about it, and he had idea what I was talking about. I did some reading, and I think I can smell a cytokine storm on people when they are having an immune response. I also heard about a woman who could accurately predict undiagnosed Parkinson's in people by their smell, and now I'm curious if I would be able to do the same if I was familiar with the smell. I have a cat with an immune condition where he gets itchy skin flare-ups that cause him to scratch spots on his chest or neck until they get raw. I swear I can smell it on him when it's flaring up. It's a similar metallicy smell to blood but different. I thought it was just my personality that caused me to constantly be cautious and aware of all possible consequences of every action. I've thought out and prepared for every possible action or interaction I might face and all of them that I won't. Too. Yep, I have OCD. It's been fun unlearning everything. Edit to add, this is my case in particular. You might relate to my comment, but not necessarily have OCD. OCD is comprised of both obsessive thoughts followed by a compulsion to alleviate the obsession and panic. I kinda have this also related to my anxiety and growing up in a traumatic household. Hard to retrain your brain when it was working so hard to survive and stay safe. I knew a dude who couldn't burp. He asked to try a beer bong, then said well, guess I'll puke now, before vomiting directly into the sink. We were all like, yo dude what the f was that? He just said, oh, I can't burp. We later found out that he had an 11th toe, which is a strong marker of inbreeding. Someone told him that night, and he thought it was hilarious. He just assumed some people couldn't burp, and had extra toes from time to time. Well, I mean technically I guess he was right. Not being able to picture something, if I close my eyes it's black. It took me 35 years. I'm not alone in aphantasia, but there are people who can see in their heads. Little edit. Thanks for the replies. I say that it's black is not from the closing the eye parts. It's black in my mind. My imagination is dark, without anything visual. Nothing at all. Can't think about an apple and see it. I think people are getting tripped up about the closing your eyes part. You can visualize and see images in your head with your eyes open too. Might just help some with their eyes closed. Agonizing period cramps with vomiting. Was told by my mother it's normal. It definitely isn't normal. I didn't realize that plenty of women have 28 day clockwork periods until fairly recently. I thought 28 days was sort of an average. It turns out that I have very irregular periods. Who knew? I have a little sliver of pinky toenails. One is the thickness of a fingernail and the other is one little nub of nail that grows up and not out. I only have to trim them once a year. I have similar pinky toenails. They get stuck on socks a lot, and the best way I've found to deal with them is to just pull them out. Yep. I have this too. I yank them out, and they don't grow back for a couple of years or more. And they don't hurt when I yank them out either. My pink is a permanently bent. I dk what it's called, but it's something genetic and my dad has it, so I never thought twice about it. Still don't actually, sometimes I realize normal people have straight pinkies and they look weird to me. I also have bent pinkies. Didn't realize they were weird until someone laughed at them. 
I thought it was normal to only poop once or twice a month until I went to a doctor about a hemorrhoids that wouldn't seem to go away and she had to inform me that most people poop at least once or twice a day. Up until I was like 20, I only pooped once a week. Never more or less. Never felt constipated or anything. It was always so weird to me to hear that people pooped every day. I couldn't even imagine lol. Whenever I was at the doctor and they'd ask when my last bowel movement was, and I'd have to say several days ago, I'd always have to explain that it was just normal to me. When I was 21 I kinda became an alcoholic, and now I have diarrhea all day every day mayo. Whoops. Not having body odor. When I was in middle school, my friend asked me in the locker room after gym class why I don't put on deodorant, and I said I don't smell, and then I said the classic line wait, you guys smell. To be more clear, I do have BO, but it's extremely minuscule. You would have to put your nose a centimeter away from my armpit to smell anything. This is apparently very common among people of Asian descent. More like Asian descent. I'll feel a sharp pain in one area of my body, but feel it in a completely different place at the same time. I thought some people might feel this, but everyone I've brought it up to looks at me, as if I have two heads. Figured it was a nerve issue. Maybe someone else kind of knows what I'm talking about or feels it? Edit. This is usually a deep pain, not superficial, like scratching one spot and feeling it in another. I'll feel the pain deep in somewhere like my abdomen. Then feel it somewhere in my arm simultaneously. I only feel it in two places at once. Edit 2. Okay, it's referred pain I guess. Just found it weird no one knew what I was feeling, or never felt it before. When I think of referred pain, I think of my endometriosis, not this type of pain I'm talking about in this post. Thanks for the comments everyone. I've had times where I scratch an itch, like, on my arm, and can feel a tingle in my back. I also just assume it's a nerve thing. Thank you.